Well, hello, YouTube. Holy crap, my hair's a mess. That's what happens when you wear a toque all day. I'm up here in the Great North. I'm in Watson Lake, Yukon, right next to all the signs. If it wasn't dark outside, I'd uh, go out, walk through the sign park, and show you. I was watching some videos here, and uh, guys like to talk about their brakes and how to cool the brakes on their semi trucks. Well, there's a lot of bad information on there. There's a lot of stupid people sharing information that they don't know shit about. And I just want to say, if you're one of those stupid people, shut the fuck up. I watched a video, I actually seen a few videos today where idiots were talking about dragging their brakes to heat them up, to dry them out before parking. I was just in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, up at Dead Horse, delivering. That's up in the Arctic Circle. Cold as fuck. I just loaded on the Kenai Peninsula. I'm hauling that back down to Leduc. Too bad it's dark. I'd show you that in the... The, 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 the mirror if it was brighter outside. But I got a big heavy frack tank on. I'm 100,000 pounds. Gross. Just a little over 100,000. Well, I'm 15 one tall. I'm 11 two wide. I'm 84 foot two inches long. So big but not huge. Oh, and then the weight. This, this, that, that's just stupid. I'm 55,000 on my back end. So all the weight's on the trailer. There's, there's, there's jack shit on my drives. 30,000 on the drives and then 13.2 um, on the steers because of the, the teeter-totter effect. I had to drive through the mountains through all of Alaska. And then across the Yukon, and now i got to go into British Columbia, which is pretty hilly, and there's some good climbs in there, too. I might have to throw on tire chains. But this load has to go on a step back. Uh, it could have gone on a double-drop trombone, but getting it through Anchorage and off the Kenai Peninsula with those windy roads would have really sucked being stretched out like that. And that's not the equipment I had with me for my last load and this is just a load that popped up so you do it with what you got and you just be smart and drive like you know what you're doing so yeah I'd hate to say but the majority of drivers can't haul this kind of stuff up here uh, the drivers up here they definitely can there's real drivers up here there's real drivers in Alaska but down in the lower 48 a good driver is an exception it's not the norm Whereas a good driver is the norm up here. A great driver is the exception up here. Big difference. <coughs> so, that's my blabber about the shit that I'm dealing with right now. Let's get back to this whole break thing. And talking about how stupid some of these people are. And, and, and it's funny that I've seen those videos here because... Uh, a couple years back, I parked here and I had a car hauler pull up next to me. And he had a crop burning exhaust, which is something I'm very familiar with because I used to own car haulers. And I know what happens with those crop burners. They melt the snow next to them and, and then and any poor bastard that parks in there ends up freezing to the ground. Well, this guy had parked next to me here. He melted the ground around my tires because his exhaust was in line with my drives on my passenger side. I didn't think about that. I pulled in here. I was dead tired. We drive 15 hours a day up here. Uh, more in Alaska. But, uh, and that's legal. And you only need eight hours off in between shifts. But uh, he, he melted everything next to me and he buggered off before I did. So everything froze because it was minus 60. And I was froze to the ground. I went in here to the tag, which is that little gas station and restaurant and uh, grocery store and uh, the girl in there called her dad and he came out with a tagger torch and melted the ground freed me freed me from my prison and he only charged me 200 bucks for doing it 
money doesn't go very far up here. Everything's expensive. So $200 to free me from the ground, that's a steal. You thank the guy for that. You you pay him the cash and you you, you take great uh, uh, relief in the fact that he didn't charge you a thousand. But, um, uh, so things freeze up very fast up here where it's cold. Don't heat up your brakes. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You go dragging your, your brakes, yeah, you're going to melt the snow and the ice and everything on your wheel. It's not going to evaporate. It's not going to disappear. You're not going to get them hot enough to do that. And then you're going to have what they call thermal shock. Take a piece of steel, heat it up with a lighter, hold it out your, your window. Like, I use a butter knife, a spoon, whatever. Hold it out your window when you park when it's minus 10. Hold it out there until your hand gets cold and you can't, don't like it anymore. Bring it in. The heat's going to disperse and it's going to drag in moisture onto that metal. It's thermal dynamics. Opposites attract. So you'll bring that back in your window and you're going to find condensation on it. Same thing happens when you heat up your brakes. If you want to park and not have your wheels freeze to the ground or your brakes freeze to the ground, I stopped over by that sign. I sat there for a good five minutes without setting my brakes. If the truck rolled, I let it roll back. Then I let out the clutch and I rolled back up to the sign. It does two things. It cools my tires down, it cools my brakes down. Took five, ten minutes. Got to do post-trip on your e-log anyways. Do your walk around when you're done. But And actually do your walk around. Don't be one of those lazy pricks. Be a professional. But I cooled my stuff down and I parked. Not terribly cold here. Minus 17 Celsius right now. But I've had cold weather on this trip. I've had minus 40 on this trip. It didn't last very long. It's actually the warmest I've seen this time of year up here. Ever. But yeah, cool your stuff down. Don't do not do that heated up and park stupidity that these guys are putting on here. Those are idiots that don't know what the F they're talking about. If you do what they tell you, you're going to set your brakes. They're going to be hot. Moisture's going to get drawn in there. It's going to freeze. Your pads are going to be frozen. Well, your shoes are going to be froze to your drums. Uh, your pads, disc brakes do freeze to the rotors too. Uh, that sucks. They break free a lot easier than, than, than shoes to drums do. But more importantly, it's the tire contact to the ground. Brakes, you could get in, whack them with a hammer. You could put a screwdriver between the pad and the, the drum inside the, the, the... I call it a gash, but it's the depth gauge mark, which is where it's cut for you to see how much usable brake shooting you have left. You put a screwdriver in there, you rattle it around, you take a pipe, you put it in the hole on your uh, your rims up against your drum, and you wrap that with a hammer. Never hit a rim in the cold, steel or aluminum. Don't do that. That's stupid. That's how you crack stuff. That's how you blow a rim and get chunks of steel coming at you, or chunks of aluminum. Some people will say, oh, it's fine. It's not. It's stupid. Don't do it. But a frozen drum, you can always fix. It doesn't take much. Wrap on the drum, put something in there, give it a good wiggle, whatever. Tires frozen to the ground is a problem. You're going to rip your tires apart if you put your diff locks in and go to pull forward. You can tear pieces of the tread out and then end up with a blowout. You can end up with a hardened, frozen, flat spot from the contact patch on the ground. Cool your tires before you park. Be smart. Do it right. Don't listen to some of these idiots on Facebook, uh, YouTube, TikTok, and all the others. Take it from somebody that lives and works in the north, somebody that actually knows cold weather driving. And use some common sense. Something that's disappeared in the industry. Be professional. Remember, don't be an asshole. That's my job. Bye-bye.